Black Adam is finally here and is possibly the worst film of all time, according to the San Francisco Chronicle and a man named Mick LaSalle. Is he right or just a pretentious douchebag? Stay tuned and find out. Nearly 5,000 years after he was bestowed with the almighty powers of the Egyptian gods and imprisoned just as quickly, Black Adam is freed from his earthly tomb, ready to unleash his unique form of justice on the modern world. Now I have to admit, I do have superhero fatigue. I've been very vocal about that. So going to see Black Adam was really my last effort to go give comic book movies a chance. I am a DC fan. I love the MCU and what they've done, but let's just face it, after Endgame, I have just given up. I'm not subscribed to Disney. I don't give a damn about any of the shows. I just don't give a shit. But DC, I've always been rooting for, especially with Zack Snyder. I love Man of Steel. I think it's a modern day masterpiece. I love Batman vs. Superman, especially Zack Snyder's Justice League. I love that movie. And with all the leadership, uh, idiocy, keeping Henry Cavill away, and then with Black Adam's been really the one constant in the entire DCU. And I was very nervous about this film because one, I have fatigue. Two, The Rock, let's just face it, he is kind of like a one-trick pony when it comes to his films. He's the same person, the same character in all of them. I mean, he's got the beige shirt and shorts. You can't distinguish his character from any of other characters he's played in the past 10 years. So with Black Adam, my main concern was, okay, I'm just going to see The Rock dressed up in a superhero costume, and is this going to really take me out of the element? I'm glad to say that those concerns are put at rest now. Let me go ahead and start with what I liked about the film. I have to admit, I enjoyed The Rock. The Rock really surprised me. I was really, like I said, just concerned with his performance and his acting, but with the story that's kind of placed behind him and with the history that he's gone through and it's told throughout the film with some twists and turns, you really kind of feel sympathy for The Rock and where he's coming from. You understand why he's stoic and why he's bitter and angry. And with him in the costume and in the action sequences, it, it was really done well. There are shades and nods to Zack Snyder in this film, which I love. I've always enjoyed his film style and his direction style. And in this film, they play in a way homage to it in a sense, but going their own route in their own way, a new way, which I think a lot of fans will appreciate it, including MCU fans. And I'll get to that later. I also enjoyed the writing and humor that was placed within the film. Yeah, DC, get this. It had humor in the film, but not too much. It had just enough humor within the film to keep me entertained and smile. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't follow the MCU formula. You don't have like a uh, emotional weighted human moment and then a joke thrown into it. There are emotional moments within this film and they are played out as they should with no piss jokes or whatever that the MCU did. Finally get to be the father I've always wanted to be. Excuse me. Got to take a whiz. What I also liked about this film is that it's an ensemble piece where you have The Rock uh, joining with the Justice Society to fight a common enemy. And to see the banter and the camaraderie within the team, being that there's no 20 films before that's a build up to this camaraderie, it was done in a great way. Everybody felt like natural. Everyone felt like this is a lived world and a lived in universe that has been doing this for quite some time. It didn't feel new or fresh. The banter was there uh, and the tropes. There's a lot of tropes that this film tends to follow. But when you think they're just doing the same old thing, they twisted a little bit, which I enjoy. There's a there's, there's something new there that we hadn't seen yet. And I have to admit, seeing Pierce Brosnan on screen, let's just face it, no matter what the man does, he just brings class and just a profound performance in what he does. And seeing him as Dr. Fate, we need more of that. We definitely need more of that. He was just, he stole the show, in my opinion. Well, he didn't steal the show. There was something that stole the show, but I'm not going to say that. I also enjoyed the action sequences. They were very Zack Snyder-ish, but very... Mature as well. Let's just be honest. The Black Adam is killing people, uh, similar to like a Deadpool style, but not as bloody. There is some violence that some parents may not enjoy, but I for one enjoyed it. So it's definitely a PG-13 film. And what I also loved is the momentum within this film. There's a constant pace. Once the film starts, it doesn't let up. There's one brief moment, I believe, in the third act that kind of slows down. But once it picks up again, you're right back in that pace and that action. So... I don't think it's going to be uh, bored, boring for anybody. I don't think the kids are going to lose interest. And I think this is a film that you can bring your kids in. Again, it's a PG-13 film. Remember that. This is not Disney. Thank God. Now, as far as the cons and what I didn't like, uh, there are some musical cues similar to Resident Evil Return to Raccoon City, where there's like an epic moment that is about to start. Or, and as soon as it happens, a, a song kicks in. 
And I'm like, oh, that's kind of like, oh, that took me out of the moment. Second, uh, there's some kids involved in the movie that get a, it gets a little corny and cheesy. But again, I know they're kind of like marketing toward that particular audience. Imagine the end of Spider-Man 2, the amazing Spider-Man 2, where that one kid puts on the Spidey mask and is like, I got this. And he's about to face off with the rhino. Something cheesy like that does happen. And I'm just rolling my eyes like, would somebody just throw him off the balcony of some stairs, please? <laughs> And to be honest, the other thing I was really disappointed in was the score. Now, let's be honest. When it comes to music and comic book movies, I feel and have always felt that DC, going back to the Christopher Reeve days, the scores are epic and they're distinctive. And once you hear it, you immediately identify who that song belongs to. There's a Man of Steel theme, the Wonder Woman theme, the Batman theme, the Justice League theme. They're all epic and feel heroic. This score in this film, it honestly felt like an MCU score, which I've always felt are some of the weakest in film. They have great stories, great CGI, but the scores, let's just face it, if you were to play the Doctor Strange score right now, would you know it's Doctor Strange or would you confuse it for something else? And the last is not really a con, it's more of a nitpick. I'm really reaching here. Uh, There are events that happen within the film that I know a lot of people are going to say, we've seen this before. They're doing the same thing like that one movie. They're doing the same thing like that other movie. They're just taking it and just making a hybrid. You know, there's nothing new. It's nothing original. I know there's going to be people that say that. I know there's going to be a bunch of MCU fans who are just not going to give this movie a chance because they're just dead loyal to their franchise. And they're they're just going to shit on it and go in with just the eyes of just looking to pick it apart. You have douchebags like this Mick LaSalle from the San Francisco Chronicle making outrageous and idiotic comments about this film, which is it's not bad. This look, bottom line, this film is not a bad film. This was a solid, great film. It took what I loved about the DC universe, which was the tone, the seriousness. Uh, There's not like button fart jokes whenever the world's about to end. The tone is there. The enemies are there. There are people dying, but there is some humor injected into it. And it wasn't done. It wasn't overwhelmed. This film does what I know a lot of people are going to be pleased with. And what it does is it takes what's best about the DCU takes the humor in a Marvel film, not a lot, but just enough and throws it into the DC universe and makes their own hybrid. DC is becoming its own now. And uh, I absolutely enjoyed this film. Now, is it the best film in the DC universe? I'm not going that far yet, but I enjoyed this film. I went in with the absolute lowest expectations about it. I was expecting a mediocre film and I was smiling throughout this film and when you have me smiling in a comic book film you know it's working i hope this is a major success for the dcu and the rock and everybody involved because it's giving fans what we've always wanted all the complaints you've heard in the past about dc films this is letting you know hey we heard you now go watch it and i'd like to just go on a final statement here again i know there's this tribalistic attitude nowadays it's all over the place right now on the internet when it comes to like halloween ends you know if you got the fans attacking each other if you liked it you're an idiot if you didn't like it you're an idiot it's just ridiculous you have the mcu versus the dcu people say it sucks not even giving it a shot enough of the bullshit just go watch it if you're an mcu fan and you hate phase four which i know a lot of you do go give this a shot i assure you you're going to enjoy it A family of four can go watch this and have a good time. Again, the uh, deaths are there, so just keep that in mind. But I feel, believe it or not, I'm going to close out this review with this statement. I feel this is the first DCU film that Marvel and DC fans can agree with. Like, hey, that was a good film. Well, those are my thoughts on Black Adam. What did you think? Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Please leave some comments below. I definitely want to see what you thought. If you haven't done so already, do me a solid and subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. It would really mean the world to me. As always, everybody, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.